Alright, I'm live. So I just got to Ho Chi Minh like an hour ago. And uh, on the website for the bus, it said it would take seven hours, but you know, they, they under promise in case there's a lot of busyness at the border, I guess. And I went so early that it was not busy. So I ended up getting here in like an hour and a half earlier than that. So instead of noon, I got here at 10.30. And I made a video of uh, getting on the bus and it stopped for a break. And then we had to stop at the border and I was videoing that. And then when I got here, I was videoing like trying to find my way to uh, the hotel. No, thank you. It's okay. No, no, no. That was a guy, uh, since just sitting here, I just opened my drink. I've only been here for two minutes. I've had two separate guys offer to shine my, like, shine my shoes. The shoes I'm wearing right now are, like, three years old, really cheap sneakers. So, and they were, like, a white color when I bought them. And now they're, like, brown and, like, falling apart. And they're cheap. They're really lightweight and comfortable, but they're so cheap. They're coming up to me with all this brush and polish and this, and can we shine your shoes? And I'm like, are you serious? These shoes are look like they're from out of the garbage. Like, why would I shine them? They're not like dress shoes. That's what just happened now. But yeah, anyways, I'm walking up and down the alleys, and I'll, I filmed all this. So it'll be the first video I put out once I get back and I edit it together. It'll be fine, like the bus ride and then finding the hotel. And I have to turn down this small alley. I can't find it anywhere. Everything's in Vietnamese, but I know the, the number of the address. It's supposed to be like 104 slash 23, and I'm looking around. And, and then in this alleyway, there's like massage places and girl places. And so I'm just trying to look at my phone and everyone's people are grabbing and trying to talk to me or sell me a massage. Or, I'm like, thank you. No, thank you. I'm good. I keep walk, like getting away. And, and then by like the 10th person, they just take a breath to say something. I go, no, thank you. I've, and I thought I had found it by then, and I did. But I realized, that, <laughs> I think that last person that I was like, no, thank you. I think they were, they were just planning to help me, I think. <laughs> but then I, and then so from that alley I'm talking about, an even more narrow alley breaks off. And it looks like it's just as wide as like a person's body. Like if someone was coming with a motorbike, you would have to wait till they're all the way through and then you could go, it's so narrow. It's like, let me just check down here. So I started walking down this little side branch of an alley and then I find the door, 104.23 and I found it. And, uh, but I'm an hour and a half early so the lady's not there. I picked a really cheap place. I was only in the front door so far, but I think what it is, it's like you go in and it looks like a little bit of a lobby with stairs going up and there's like one, We'll see when I go there. I'll make a video on the apartment once I go up, but it's just to clean it now for the next hour and then I'm gonna go back. But I have a feeling it's like, it's one apartment. It's not like a hotel with many rooms. It's like this lady owns like an apartment where you come in in the bottom and it's just like empty space and there's stairs going up and the room is up there. So I think I'm renting like a single apartment. I, I go back to get checked in in an hour. So I came here to Waikiki restaurant to grab food and go live with you guys. Savvy, you're there. Go get a legit massage and film it like many others do. Maybe I will. My shoulders have been hurting for a while and the bus ride was kind of sucked. The bus is actually great. You can see that video. The seats are nice and big and comfortable. It's like not the bus's fault. It's just a long ride and my sh I'm trying to sleep and my head's probably hanging and my neck hurt. I just finished watching your last live and here you are. Yeah. And the bus was cool. Like, you know, the aisle you walk down, one side has two seats and then one side has only a single seat. And so if you're a solo traveler like me, you could just have a single seat and not have to sit beside anybody. It was stupid too. I before coming here, I thought I'll be smart and prepare, and have some cash with me that I can exchange. Or like I'm kind of used to in Cambodia, they'll take American and change at anywhere and just give you their money in exchange. Or 
I could find a bank or because I was just unconfident that my Canada bank card would work here or they might it might trigger it and go Vietnam freeze it or something and then my credit card I told them I'm going to this hotel story I'm telling you about and she's she's just a lady with a notepad in her thing like she doesn't have anything way to pay so she led me down the street I'm just following this lady now down at another alley down another alley and she brings me to an, to like a bank with an ATM because she can only take Vietnamese dong I think it's called and so I throw my card in there but in my worst case I have a US hundred on me I could go change it somewhere but so I try my bank card in there and it and it worked I took out a million dollars a million dong <laughs> it's so weird it's like I have to select which uh, I have to select like which uh, amount I want to withdraw out, and I'm selecting one million, one zero 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 zero. But in U.S., that's like forty dollars. <laughs> so I took out forty dollars, a million Vietnamese. Richard says, uh, "Good to see you made it there. Be careful, UFC. Don't copyright strike you." Oh yeah, in the back. Who cares? It probably will happen. It just means I can't make money off the ads if they do that, and I don't make anything off. It's like, oh, I'm not going to make 50 cents off this. Like, it's they, you don't get anything anyway. I'll show you uh, this place. It looks really cool. <clears throat> but anyways, my hotel for three nights is about 40. That million was basically it. She gave me like 25 cents change back. So now I'm, I paid for the hotel, but I'm back to no more Vietnamese money. I should have took out more, I guess. So I came to this restaurant because it looks more bigger <clears throat> rather than a little shop. <coughs> and I walked up showing my credit card and I'm like, Do you, can you take this credit card? She's like, yeah, yeah, okay. So I'm gonna pay with credit card here. It's a big, it's a big legit like bar restaurant. So I shouldn't have taken out that hundred. I might just, it's no big deal. I can just keep it on me and redeposit it when I go back to Cambodia. So I might do, I might go back to that ATM and take out another like 2 million. <laughs> then that's like 80 bucks for, for the next three days or something. And yeah, if you're wondering about teaching, like I always bring it up. I'm originally from Cambodia. If you're finding this and you're seeing me for the first time, I'm an English teacher in Cambodia and I always talk about how you can have that life too and move here. And it's a special TESOL program where you get certified to be a teacher and it's government accredited and they line you up with a job like near the end of it. it takes place in the country and so I did it in Phnom Penh. But this school, they also have Ho Chi Minh and I've, for months I've been ignoring like representing the Ho Chi Minh side of things and so that's why I'm here now show you what it looks like, show you what life is like. And if you're interested in teaching abroad, it's not only Phnom Penh, you could come to Ho Chi Minh too. But in Vietnam, you have to have a degree, but you get paid way more. So it's worth checking out. I put a link in the description here to the website for the TESOLS program. You could read about it. If you decide to go for any of the programs, just put Tom Trips out, it helps, helps support the channel. You could also do the course online if you'd rather chip away at your own time at home. And if you're already certified with TEFL, they have a separate program just to line you up with jobs in Ho Chi Minh or Phnom Penh. So if you need a teaching job, check out the website. If you guys got any questions about me or suggestions that I do in Ho Chi Minh, I think today I won't do anything crazy. Plus it's Sunday, so there won't be much going on. So I'm gonna get a video. I'm gonna make a video of the hotel room after this and then I'll probably later on when I go get dinner I'll make a video about that Thank you. Thank you. and then tomorrow and the next day is, is when I have full days to go do stuff and I can get a little bit of rest Oh yeah, and I had to get an e-visa to come here. 
I was saying in my last live, I think I got scammed because I, I went through a travel agency. And so I ended up paying just a little bit more and I was worried I got scammed, but they, they ended up, they did send me the visa, so it was okay. I'm looking in my credit card this morning and they, the charge was way more than I thought it would be. And I, that's the thing that happens with these scams. I think I got, I got ripped off by about $60 US for my e-visa. It should be like 25 or 30 and I paid like 80. But that's not what I, that's not the price I saw on the website. So I got scammed. But sometimes these scams happen and then on top of everything, your the visa they give you isn't even real. Like they give you a fake one. At least mine got me in. <laughs> so it worked, but uh, I paid like more than triple. So that kind of pisses me off. When I was looking at booking everything, I got like the cheapest hotel and I'm like really nickel and diming and oh, I'll go for that one. It's like five bucks less. And, and then all of a sudden, the unit, then you just get $60 stolen from me. Like if I knew I was gonna be chipping in that extra $60, I could have been smarter and got an e-visa from the government and then used that 60 to get a way nicer hotel. <laughs> So instead I'm spending an extra 60 and I'm getting nothing for it instead of uh, something I could actually use. You guys can learn from my mistakes. So when you're getting EV, don't just search EVs because they make their websites really look like you're on an official site. That's what fooled me. So make sure, do a little extra time searching for the official government website. And usually it says gov in the website address. Don't be an idiot like me. It'll be interesting too. I've, I, I had a feeling that I haven't gone up in the hotel yet because someone is staying there and they check out by noon. So he's going to come out at noon and then she's going to clean it and then I'm going to go at 1230 and, and check in. But I have a feeling it's going to be not that nice. <laughs> not that good. It'll be pretty simple. I just hope it's clean and everything. And now just walking around, I can see other places that look really nice, but they're a little bit more expensive, but it, like, what would it have been? Uh, so maybe an extra, an extra 15 or $20 total, I could have got a better, uh, a much better room. But I guess you got to get out here and it's hard when you're not here, you've never been here. I should have asked my friends more, like what's the best place to stay? If you guys have any questions, you can write stuff or comments or things I should do while I'm here. I got some like buffalo, buffalo, buffalo popcorn chicken or something is what I ordered. So we'll see little, uh, little spicy popcorn chicken. Kevin says Venom versus Holland. Oh, in the background, yeah. Yeah, maybe that's bad news. I can't get away from it. From Sweden. All right. Kevin says he's from Sweden. <laughs> Trying to not show that TV. This looks like a cool restaurant. I mean, they have an upstairs too, and from the outside it said in huge letters Tiki Bar. Which means, if you don't know what that means, it looks like everything's made out of bamboo and it kind of looks like Hawaii and stuff like that. Like you can see the theme all around me here. Or like this kind of thing. That's very tiki. Which state? I'm in Vietnam and Ho Chi Minh. So I don't know what you mean by state. 
It's 11.30 a.m. here, right before noon, and I bet you it's something like 29 degrees here. Or it's, it's not as hot as Cambodia. Cambodia is like 37 or 36. I'm wearing long sweatpants right now because I knew the bus would be cold and I wanted to be comfy, so... And I'm not dying in wearing pants right now. If I was in Cambodia, you'd be just covered in sweat, like sitting still. So it's, it's a little bit cooler here, but still really hot. I'm originally from, Can from Canada, but I, I live in Phnom Penh, Cambodia as an English teacher. I'm visiting Ho Chi Minh for four days to make videos about, because I try to help and encourage people and help guide them on how to be a teacher in Phnom Penh. And there's a special teacher program that I took and I refer it to other people and recommend it. But it also takes place here. So I want to show you guys this place too. There might be people out there that want to teach in Vietnam and they see my videos and they go, oh, Cambodia, that's not my, what I'm looking for. So I'm going to start covering Vietnam too. Enjoy, man. Thank you. Yeah, I'm really hungry because I've been up since 3 a.m. and I didn't really eat anything. I was just like sleeping on the bus. I can feel I'm weak and, you know, you, I, my, I start to get like shaky hands because I'm low blood sugar. I wanted to, I walked by, there's a, there's a, a dish that's in Vietnam. It's just a sandwich they have in Vietnam called Bom Mi. And it's like a, like a small baguette and they put <coughs> different types of meat in there that you want and then cucumber and like spring onion and good sauce and it's it's really good and it's cheap like these awesome little sandwiches but my story with my cash and my money like I can't those types of places with the sandwich are like little local shops on the corner or little they're out on the street almost like <coughs> they're not gonna take MasterCard so that's why I came to this restaurant Bill, I got scammed in Cambodia, Phnom Penh, when I arrived six months ago, when immigration gave me a tourist visa, when I asked for an E visa, E type visa, yeah. I've heard of that happening to people, and they they did it on pur they do it on purpose if they don't really want you in the country permanently. No one, I can't start saying why it was, but I've heard stories of especially people from people trying to come from Africa or South Africa. They see that country of origin, like from your passport, and they just think, you know, we're not letting too many of these people in, and they, but you can come temporarily, and they give you a, a tourist one. I don't know if that was the reason, but. Or if you have, unfortunately, there's sometimes like prejudice towards race. So if you're black or if you're black or from Africa or, or something like that, they could sometimes, like I knew a girl I worked with who was a teacher from Africa and, she, and she's black and she, she had all the correct paperwork and everything and from the school and she had to go back and every single time they gave her a tourist visa and they would just shake her their head and like by the, it was like the fourth time she got the real proper one. And sometimes the confusion though, the tourist visa is actually called E visa as well, but with a lowercase e. A little, a little e for electronic visa. And then the E class visa that you wanted is a capital E. And you have to say like, you have to say E class or E type visa for the Cambodia one because it's easily confused. The tourist one is also just called E-Visa. So they're, they're both called E-Visa, but they're wildly different from each other. They just have the same name. And the tourist one is a lowercase E, and the, and the one you want is a capital E, E-Class or E-Type. So maybe that was the confusion, or maybe they were trying to not let you in permanently. 
Coming to Thailand in three months. Sweet. So I got my food. So it's like popcorn chicken and then there's, I guess that's buffalo sauce and some kind of dipping, dipping sauces. And this is about 4.95 US, I think, if I'm doing the conversion right. Yeah, being scammed is just part of it, I guess. It's really stupid on my part. The visa thing I just told you guys about. Like, honestly, I wasn't careful, you know. I started searching e-visa. And I've done it before, like a year ago. And so then the, I, I click on a website. The first one I look, I see that looks like, yeah, that looks legit. Or that looks familiar, like from last year. And I open it. I'm like, oh yeah, this this is all like the same as what I did last year. And so I felt like comfort and familiar that, oh yeah, this is it. And they they purposely make their websites look like you're on the right site. Like, so don't just type in only e-visa, like spend extra time typing more words in that'll be like, you know, official government Vietnam government visa website or something like make sure you're getting it from the government one and then you only have to pay like 25 bucks and when I came the very first time last year I went to Hanoi and I did do it properly that time but it must have been like lucky the other thing I noticed when you google this stuff all the all the first like 10 results are all the travel agencies and stuff i guess they have money to put into marketing and seo which is like search engine optimization so they're these travel agencies are doing things with marketing and paying money so that they show up first in google so that's what makes it tough too you have you search it and then you have to scroll by a lot of them until there's like the government website and I think the government they're not putting extra money into showing up first on Google like they don't care about that so even though they're the official site you'll get all these agencies showing up first when you try to search it and then when you click on one they look like the government website so it's really tricky Do you guys mind? I got, I got an important, a really important text, and so I just have to switch apps for a second. It might freeze, so I'll show you the street here. Are you guys there? Okay, thanks for staying with me. You won't believe this story. So, I'll, to, referring to this text I just got. So it's Sunday right now. Two days ago on Friday, I had a show, and so I, I had a backpack with. Uh, my iPad and the iPad holder because I, I, I read the iPad showing me charts and stuff and after that show I went to another bar where my friends were playing and it was a big acoustic night and lots of people there and I come in wearing my backpack and it's crowded and stuff and I just felt like oh and I took my backpack off and I put it down like in a good spot kind of behind the stage in a corner kind of like no one would see it there and I I'm a regular at this bar, like I know all the people that work there and I go there all the time. It's Cl Cloud Bar, if you're familiar. So anyways, we, drive, we have beers and me and my buddy like leave that place and we go somewhere else and get food and then I go home. That was Friday and then all Saturday goes by and my head is all spun around with I'm going to Ho Chi Minh soon, is the visa legit, is, I have to get up early and pack my stuff. So I like forgot all about the backpack and it has a brand new iPad Mini 6 in there. I paid like $600 for that and I use it all the time. I use it to edit all my videos. I use it for all my bands and stuff. 
I use it when I teach sometimes because it's like an unlimited flashcard. You could have a million things and just keep flipping to the next thing and show it to them and like, oh. So then this morning I'm packing up to come on the trip here. And then I realize I'm looking around for the backpack because my iPad's in there and I'm like, the backpack's not here. And I'm like, where's the last place I had it? And I'm like, club bar, I took it off. No. We're talking now, it's been two days. So I didn't even realize I lost it for till two days later, so bad. So I text the people that work there and I texted the bar that I went for food after because I'm not even sure if maybe I brought it there. I never forget my stuff, it was so weird. And then just now I'm talking to you guys and the guy from Cloud Bar messages me, is this your stuff? And he has a picture of it. He found it. It was sitting in a good spot where no one would see it and I, I kind of turned the backpack around backwards facing the thing so it's flat. So you, it probably just blended in with the wall in the shadows. Like no one even, it probably just sat there this whole time and no one even saw it because I kind of put it in down in a good spot, but still the iPad, man. Oh my God. But anyways, he sent me a picture. He has it. And I'm like, bro, I'm going to give you 10 bucks when I <laughs> come back there and get it. He's a Cambodian guy, so 10 bucks will be good. Woo! And that's really been on. Imagine all morning, I feel like my iPad's probably lost. Like, so that's really good news. I, I have it waiting for me when I get back. Yeah. Now I'm getting messages because I've messaged a bunch of friends. Now my other friends are like, yo, Alan found it. That's so dumb. Like, you know how people talk about stories of getting their stuff stolen or their phone stolen right out of their hand? Like, phone snatchings happen, like you're on a phone call and they just drive by and take it from you and keep driving. And here, I left it, I just left it in a public place for 48 hours. I didn't lose it, so I'm lucky. got to eat this food. Do you know when you kind of fast for a while, like you don't eat all for a big, you don't eat for a while and then you're, you're feeling the pain from being hungry, but your, your appetite's kind of gone because you, you switch from being super hungry to almost feeling uh, sick and weak. Like, and the only way is to force some food in and, uh, I feel like I got some color from the sun. I think it was, uh, I think it was the last live stream I did. I was really in the direct sun a lot. Yesterday. Oh, everyone's dropping out and leaving. And if you feel like supporting the channel, you can also support me by sending a super thanks or sometimes people go, oh, buy yourself a coffee and they send me like a dollar or they'll say, uh, go and go and check out this, uh, like they'll have some suggestion I go check out that maybe costs five bucks and they'll send me the five bucks. It's like, I want to see you make a video of this place, like the zoo or something. Go to the zoo and here's five bucks donation because that's how much it costs to get in or whatever. Like, so if you, if you want me to do something and, or you have a question or a topic or a request or something, you can send any tiny don donation and, and then write in what you want and I'll do it for you. Or if you have a YouTube or you have a small business or, or service or a website, you can do a donation and write it there and I'll say, I'll plug it on the, I'll talk about you and promote your stuff. Maybe I'll go live. It's Sunday night though, so it might be Deadsville. 
but this is supposed to be the crazy busy street so maybe after dinner I'll make a video for dinner and then maybe I might go live later tonight if it's a crazy party scene we could just walk from one end to the other that can go live Bill says uh, where do you live in PP BKK1 it's close to a little street with bars and restaurants called Basak, Basak Lane. I live basically right in Basak Lane. It's very close to the Independence Monument. This buffalo sauce is not buffalo. It's like, uh, like the red sauce. It's, it's just like spicy. It's kind of sweet and kind of spicy. You know, you know when you get like buffalo, it's not the American buffalo sauce. That'll be the next thing now. I hope my hope my credit card works here. But she can't be mad at me because I walked up and showed her the credit card and I was like, do you, do you take this? And she said, okay. And I, I put in a travel advisory on my credit card, so they should know I'm here. Then I should go take out maybe... Uh, I just don't want to take out too much. I don't want to have... I don't want to have Vietnamese money on me when I'm on my last day, you know what I mean? Or as little as possible. I want to be down to like a dollar or fifty cents, and then you just give it give it to somebody or whatever. Like, if I'm down to like another like forty buck, like another million left or something, I'll be like, oh god. And then you t bring it back. Then you have to exchange it, and you lose on that too. Like, nice. Yeah, you're not very far. Bill says he lives in BKK three. Which I think is a little bit south, a little bit south of me, and a little bit, a little bit to the west, by like a kilometer and a half or something, maybe two kilometers. Street 402. I think we're closer than we think even. I don't know the exact streets, but... You're like a 10 minute walk away from me probably, or 15 at the most. I'm not really feeling this food. I don't really want it. Oh, I have to use the bathroom too, which is like I was hoping to just check in and use the bathroom and take a shower. And she's like, come back in an hour and a half. <laughs> so I thought, oh God, I'll, I'll find a place that takes credit card and eat some food or something. See these people with the hats here. The triangle, uh, those little triangle hats, that's like a Vietnam thing. La Last year when I went to Hanoi, I, went, I, I flew there in, in the airport in line for like the immigration or whatever. There's like an American guy, like just a white guy like me, and, he, and he's wearing one of those hats. And he's being really like goofy about it and all that. And that's other people in line were like talking about him behind his back saying that that's, it's not cool for a white guy to walk around wearing that like you're a big goof or something. Cause it's like, 
it's disrespectful and it's like cultural appropriation sort of and the, he just looked like the type like he's not doing it in a authentic respectful way he's doing it like he's uh, being a funny smart ass or something and then everyone was shaking their head and mumbling about him Bill says, I should talk about how scary it is to walk on the streets of Phnom Penh. You probably mean, it's not scary like you're going to be hurt or robbed. It's it's scary like uh, getting run over by motorcycles. It's like just chaos on the roads. And on top of that, there's no such thing as, no one's thinking about who has a right of way. There's no such thing as that. It's like everybody has the right of way at all times, no matter who you are. So it's whoever is more brave to go for it is going first kind of thing. And extremely often motorbikes are going, they'll, they'll drive right into oncoming traffic. And so they're going in any, all directions. So you could be like on a one way street and you're looking towards the oncoming, waiting till it's clear. And you're about to take a step and like three bikes could whiz by right in front of your face coming from the opposite side like going into oncoming traffic and that goes for walking too like you're walking with motorbikes at your back and they're coming they're going by your shoulder and, and whizzing by and then you look up and there's like two bikes coming right driving right at you and they're on the wrong side of the road driving into oncoming so that's that's the kind of time when it's like you get anxiety or it's like uh, scary to walk on the streets how about the open holes on the sidewalks yeah so that could mean a couple things so like they're here on the sidewalk sometimes like it's almost like instead of a sewer instead of a circle like manhole instead of that it's like a big square hole and they put a big cement rectangle like lid on on there like a plug that sits in there and when you step on those they go like dunk, dunk, and you're always worried they're gonna like fall through or fall in or if you're not looking down while you walk the lid could be not on there and then you'll just step right into a hole those are big that's probably what you mean the other type of sidewalk hole is uh, a lot of the si a lot of the pathways and sidewalks and like places you walk on the street um, the ground is not like just a solid flat cement. It's like made of little square tiles that are all beside each other. And they're maybe like this deep. And so they're all like that. And just with the rain and erosion, cause it's, it's probably sand underneath there. And motorbikes ripping up on the sidewalk. That's the other thing. When the roads get busy, they'll, the bikes will all start driving on the sidewalks too. But anyways, these little tiles, floor tiles, outdoor like floor tiles get kicked up or knocked out of place or erosion makes them separate and fall apart. And so you could have little little square holes where one of those things is missing now. And it's just perfect for like half your foot to get caught in there and, and you know, twist your ankle. And also these tiles I'm talking about, they get really slippery on top. There's a certain kind actually that are don't have grooves in them, so they're really slippery. And I've heard stories that when it rains, like there's been cases where people have died just just w walking normally, and they they slip and and like break their neck uh, on these tiles. And I think now they don't really use those smooth ones anymore. They have they like have grooves in them because of that. That could be here. That could be a rumor. I don't know. I just heard that from p other people and stuff. Oh, I'm really not feeling this food. Yeah, Bill says missing concrete box covers. Yeah, that's the first example I was talking about.
Well, should I end it here? I'm getting the, I'm starting to feel the vibes that it's, uh, this session is over. You guys got anything else you want to say? Just watching me eat. Gotta love seeing four people on a scooter, Bill says. Like four people on one scooter. I have a picture of five. Families do it sometimes where it'll be like a mom in the middle and she's driving. And then behind her is two older kids that are more like 12, 13 years old. And then in front of her is like a younger child who is, uh, you know, maybe like nine years old, eight or nine. So that's four. And then in front of that child, at the very front, will be like a baby who has, is not even sitting, they're just standing where the driver's feet would be. The, the baby is just standing there and reaching up and hanging on to the, the front of the bike. And then the mom is, so the mom is reaching over the two girls in front of her and then two behind too. And I got a picture and it was like five people on, five people on one motorbike like going home from school or whatever. No, and no helmet. Five people, no helmet. <laughs> and this bike is not any kind of special modified family bike or anything. It's like a regular one or two person motorbike and they put, they squish five people on there. I feel like this live is boring. When people watch it later, it'll just be me staring at the thing at the end here. So stay tuned. If you want to see more, I'm here for the next four days. So hit the bell icon and you can join me when. Yeah, Bill says, imagine if you had like five people with no helmets in the US, they would take your kids away probably. But yeah, I might go live tonight, walking around if it's busy, but it's Sunday night, so it'll probably be not going on I'll do it then I'll do it another night if it's like that but yeah I'm gonna go back and make a make a proper video of my hotel room and it's probably gonna be pretty funny because it's like I'm paying like $11 a night and it looks pretty uh, <laughs> reflective of that so but you never know they surprise you here a little cute place and they keep it really clean it could be good so we'll see and then maybe I'll uh, make a video of getting dinner later. Remember, until next time, how you spend your days is the way you spend your life. It's never too late to start tripping out.